How is this not like the first thing people talk about when you mention Argentina? <laughs> Look at this. You know, thank God it isn't, but how is this not like the biggest theme park in the country? This is remarkable. All these penguins here, like such a fascinating species, such a fascinating life cycle. So it's interesting behavior. Look at this one right here. This should be the first thing that anyone ever mentions to you about Argentina. Forget about Maradona or Messi or football. Just be like, oh yeah, Argentina, yes. It's all about the penguins down there. Jesus, look at these dogs. These are sea dogs. Those are two German shepherds out there playing in the water. Well, like the German shepherds, southern right whales also enjoy these waters. They'll arrive in June. They stay through to the end of the year. It's where they come to give birth and to, uh, nurse, to nurse their young. We won't see the white right whales on this trip, but we will be here for a few days. We will try and see some orcas on the north side of the island. Uh, we'll certainly see some elephant seals. We'll certainly see some sea lions. And we'll certainly see some penguins. This is the first day of a seven day trip that's gonna end in El Chaten. All right, let's get started. Puerto Peramines is the only town on the Valdez Peninsula. It is really only a few streets tucked into a corner of the Golfo Nuevo. It's a whale themed town for those southern right whales that breed and nurse their young in this little bay. About a thousand come each year and in season you can see the show from the beach in town or anywhere along the coast here. But that video is for another trip. For us, this town has the hotels, cafes and restaurants to be the staging area for the other excursions around the peninsula. The road to Punta Norte, which is where the orcas are right now, just waiting for us. And uh, you get a good sense of just how how flat and empty and vast this this area is on this drive. So it's about an hour and twenty drive, hour and twenty minute drive on a dirt road, hardback dirt road. And uh, well, if we see orcas, then it's all worth it. The Valdez Peninsula is on the northern edge of the eighth largest desert in the world, the Patagonian Steppe. The steppe extends from the Atlantic Ocean to the Andes Mountains, from Chubut. To Tierra del Fuego. A vast part of Argentina is just this, a flat desert with low bushes and grasses. Though the Valdez Peninsula is a nature reserve pr protected under provincial law, the land itself is actually in private hands. It's all estancias, farming sheep. As a visitor, you mostly have access to the outposts that sit on the bluffs above the water and are run by the province. But generally there's no beach access and you're asked not to stop on your drive from one point to the other. And as you are racing from one point to another, take note of these. The guanacos. For me, these guanacos are the most majestic and noble of the Patagonian fauna. These animals once numbered between 30 and 50 million. Waves of them roamed across Argentina from the shores of the Atlantic to the peaks of the Andes. A remarkably adaptable species. Okay, we're here in Punta Norte and uh, everyone's just kind of waiting to see if they see an orca. Uh, so far, they don't see many around. This might be as close as we get. Which is good. Let's assume that photo was taken here. This is another good one. So that's what we're waiting for. And I gotta say, there's nothing quite as adorable as seeing sea lion pups playing in the water. They really do look like they're just playing in the water, playing in the water. There's a big colony of sea lions right down there. And of course, this is what the orcas come for, is to hunt the young sea lions that are just now learning to get out into the water, right? So the sea lions come this time of year because it's that time frame when the, sea, the baby sea lions have been born and they're just now starting to get into the water. So that's why they're coming right now. That's why the orcas come here to hunt at this time of year. Good, man. <laughs> All right, start. Which one was your name? Juanma. Juanma. 
eh, mi nombre es Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel, Juan Manuel, claro, Juan Manuel. Más Juan Manuel. corto, Juan Manuel. All right, we're here with a friend, Juan, Ma, Juan Manuel, from yeah, Spain. I am marine biologist and I yeah. leave my country in December yeah. for a uh, expedition in Antarctica in a reserve vessel, German reserve vessel, a Polasten is the name. Uh -huh. We spent almost three months in Antarctica yeah. doing different studies of marine mammals and also geological studies and All right. you know the experiments in relation of the global temperature change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after this, I arrive in Chile, Punta Arenas, and I start my trip to visit this country that is huge. Yeah. And try to to watch a little bit in three weeks as much as I, as I can. All right. Like so I'm interested in the people who come out here and like make a specific trip and spend like 48 hours out here and try and see what it is. Yeah, this is the the only way. Is as much time you spend in the area, you have more chance to watch it. Yeah, sure. And we wake up very early, five five in the morning, yeah. because I am. Living in Puerto Pirámides, yep. we took the car and we stay here. And around nine o'clock, the yeah. killer whales start in this area. Yeah. They start to be very close to the to the coast and the yeah. and the and the, sea, the baby sea lions. Yeah. And they were six uh, orcas. Six orcas, yeah. And they try to catch in three times. And like they tried to come into shore three times? Yeah, they were yes, the, uh, one of the first with the male and second with a female. And yeah. after this, they disappeared during two or three hours and they yeah. come back again yeah. in this area. But in this case, they were socializing. They were jumping, they were yeah. touching each other, they did spy hopping. It was super cool. Oh man, that's amazing, right? Super and amazing. everyone here must have obviously was rushing to their cameras and rushing to the shore. Yeah. As close as they could get, right? To get the pictures and everything, right? Yeah, there are a lot of people is coming right? here because this is the most famous spot of killer whales hunting sea lions in the world. All right, so this like encounter you had with the killer whales this morning, right? Yeah. Like how does that, of all the sort of like, I guess encounters with nature that you've had in your life, like how does this rank, right? Like, it seems like it would be a pretty remarkable moment to for me it will be or oh, is the yeah. best moment that I live because also I'm a marine biologist I like killer whales yeah. but also to when I was uh, because this these killer whales I think they, they not maybe some 30 years and also in the documentaries you are watching the killer whales of Argentina yeah, because are. they are these animals are teaching to the babies of the killer whale mm -hmm. to hunt it is this teaching that makes orcas such fearsome predators and so fascinating to study. Here in the Valdez, there's only a couple of dozen individuals, and of those, only a handful actually hunt the sea lion pups this way. As Juan Ma mentioned, this hunting technique is a cultural tradition, taught and passed on from generation to generation. Well, that's it for us here at Punta Norte. We are not gonna wait to see if some orcas arrive or not. We're gonna move on. So, another trip, we'll see the orcas. Magellanic penguins and they build their nests inland in this desert and they burrow under bushes and we're in a colony of 600,000 of them here in this part of the Valdez. It's, they're everywhere. They're standing like sentries just throughout, <coughs> throughout the scrub land here. Yeah. They come here to nest and to molt. This is why they're looking. Some of them look kind of, kind of, kind of shaggy, but they're actually just molting. Yeah, I've got a thousand questions about what these things are doing here. I'm gonna find. Them. Oh my God! Right here. I think I've ever seen a higher concentration of any wildlife than this. 
work. Estamos acá con Candy. Uh -huh. Es una guarda parque acá en la colonia de pingüinos Maj... ¿Cómo dice? Magallanes. Magallanes. Sí. Más grande del mundo, ¿no? Sí, una ¿Sí? de las más grandes del mundo, junto ah. con Punta Tombo. Sí. Junto con Punta Tombo, ok. Uh -huh. Y como lo especial de esta colonia, no sé si es bueno. Estas especies siempre se hacen sus nidos en tipo... A mí me llamó mucha atención uh -huh. que parece que están haciendo un pingüino haciendo un nido en sí. un desierto. Sí, digamos, ¿no? sí, sí, sí. Vienen siempre en septiembre a comenzar uh -huh. la etapa reproductiva y ellos hacen sus nidos siempre debajo de arbustos, uh -huh, buscando protección. Pero los machos llegan primero y construyen los nidos, cavan con sus patas debajo de arbustos yeah. o más en forma de cuevas yeah. y después a mediados de septiembre llegan las hembras y se van emparejando siempre en el mismo nido con el mismo macho. Ah, entonces uh -huh. vuelven años después. Cada temporada, sí. Siempre que hayan tenido éxito reproductivo, yeah. o sea que al menos uno de los dos pichones sobrevivió, yeah. vuelven a elegir esa pareja. Vuelven a elegir esa pareja. Entonces, pero no viajan acá juntos, digamos. No, es se como encuentran si... acá. Wow. Ellos se reconocen mediante el sonido. Yeah. Entonces vuelven al mismo nido y se encuentran llamándose. ¿Cuándo nacen los, los y... ¿cómo dice? pinchinos? Eh, pichones. Pichones. Los, los Ajá. bebés. Ajá. Nacen en mediados de noviembre. Ellos sí. ponen los huevos, dos siempre por pareja, en octubre. Yeah. Y después, 40 días luego, nacen en mediados de noviembre. En mediados de noviembre. Uh -huh. Y después de tres meses, ahora en mediados de febrero, ya yeah. se independizaron todos los pingüinos. Yeah. Entonces ahora los bebés están en el mar aprendiendo a nadar y a cazar. Y a cazar, ok. Uh -huh. ¿Y a dónde van ahora? Y ahora, una vez que finalizan todo el cambio de plumas que yeah. hacen todos los pingüinos, eh, migran hacia el sur de Brasil. Eh, mm. Tienen 3.000 kilómetros de migración yeah. hacia ese sí. punto y se quedan los cinco meses restantes del año en el agua. Ya oh, no man. tocan tierra en Brasil. Y están mm. ahí comiendo. Están plena. ahí nadando, buceando, yeah. comiendo. Yeah. Sí. Yeah. ¿Qué más has visto acá en el agua? Ah, se ven muchas cosas. Muchos lobos marinos pasando que vienen de otros lugares. Uh -huh. Y también orcas se pueden ver. Oh, sí, eso, eso, claro, eso sí. es el... Esa es la frutilla del pote. Yeah. <risa> la frutilla del sí, sí. pote, bien dicho. Con el agua. Oh my god. This is too cute. No, 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 This whole colony of penguins has only been here since the 1970s because they only showed up after all of the sea lions had been uh, had been hunted out of here. So these are the tanks where the sea lion blubber was cooked down into oil. What they would do is they would club to death the sea lions on the beach, skin them, scrape all the blubber off of the skins. I think they'd soak the, the skin in salt water and lay it out to dry. Then they'd eventually scrape all the blubber off of the skin and then boil it down here and um, eventually render down the fat, right? Render down the fat into oil. And then it would produce five to nine liters of oil per sea lion. And then be transported to Puerto Piramides, where we're staying. And then eventually, of course, shipped up to Buenos Aires. And that went on, that industry went on from about 1912, that's when they started, until 1950, 1960, when they hunted the entire sea lion colonization colony here out of existence. And um, shortly afterwards, in 1970, is when the penguin colony started arriving. Yeah, circle of life. And no trip to the Valdez is complete without taking the chance to snorkel with the sea lions. On this day, six of us loaded into a boat and headed 45 minutes down the shore from town. These are southern sea lions, also called Patagonian sea lions. They live along the entire coast of southern South America, and in Argentina, they number around 200,000. This is an immensely satisfying wildlife experience. These sea lion pups come right up to you without fear, without hesitation. They seem to playfully seek out this interaction. You can see the joy of how they move underwater and interact and play. 
like I've never seen anything comparable. While the snorkeling is mostly about interacting with sea lions, don't sleep on the majesty and beauty of the plants and rocks and hidden underwater life of the South Atlantic. Would it be clicking along for his own photo? No. I mean, okay. No, no, no. Okay. It's on video there. All right, you got to... You can't yeah. see. You yeah, right I can there. see right there. Great. Okay. It's funny, there's a shadow right on my face. But you know, this shit doesn't even matter. Oh, maybe it's, it doesn't it's even not, matter. No, it's not. It's that, it's that bar, but it doesn't even matter. You know, and it occurred to me, like, is there any other place in the world besides Africa where you have such intimate experience with wildlife? So in the end, I guess that's my takeaway from the Valdez. This is a world-class destination for viewing wildlife. It's on par with the African savanna or the Galapagos Islands. I mean, where else, where else even compares? and it barely registers outside of the country. And this is true like so many other things I find in Argentina. The Valdez is a gem hidden in plain sight. Anyhow, there we are, signing off now. See you next time.